to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, the Honourable Phil Goff. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a relatively straightforward and simple bill. Uh, so limited in its real impacts, I guess, that uh, no regulatory impact analysis has been done uh, because it has only a minor impact. I think the bill, however, does some useful things and on that basis is worthy of support. The, first, uh, the bill basically does three things. Firstly, it prevents persons who have served a home detention sentence of at least three months from qualifying for jury service for five years. It's a limited exclusion of somebody who has broken the law to an extent that they have received a sentence, more than a minimum sentence, of home detention. Secondly, it empowers registrars to excuse permanently from jury service people who have chronic ill health or a permanent disability or who are 65 years and over. And I want to come back to that point. This is not an exclusion of people on the basis of their age. Uh, people over the age of 65 uh, have an important contribution to make. They make it competently. Uh, we would be in some trouble if, in fact, we excluded in an ageing population those over the age of 65 from being on a jury. Thirdly, it aims to help maintain the privacy, the safety and the security of jurors by withholding their uh, addresses from the accused person. So part one of the bill uh, deals with the question of jury service and it says that anyone uh, who has committed an offence and who has uh, served a sentence of more than three months on home detention uh, will be restricted, will be prevented from serving on a jury for a five-year period. Uh, there is a much, uh, there's a permanent exclusion, I understand, if you've actually served a jail uh, sentence. And the rationale, I guess, is reasonably simple. If you commit a crime uh, that's serious enough to earn you home detention, then you're not really in a position to stand judgment over another person's guilt or innocence for a period of time. Uh, I don't think that is a big deal. The bill also allows people to seek exclusion from jury service on the basis of their disability or their ill health uh, or if they're over the age of 65. Now the important point here, Mr Speaker, is those that seek such an exclusion are excluded permanently from service. I said before that the important point is that this does not introduce an age limit for jury service. It's worth considering some of the submissions, however, that were made to the Select Committee because a number of groups felt that by introducing a permanent exclusion for those over the age of 65 who sought it, we would be stereotyping, we would be reflecting on the ability of those people uh, to stand uh, uh, in judgment of others by being part of a jury. I basically disagree with their arguments, sir, but I feel obliged to present the arguments that they made to the Select Committee. The Human Rights Commission, for example, uh, quote, considers that the proposed amendment has the effect of per perpetrating or perpetuating stereotypical ideas about older people's ability to contribute constructively to society and, given changing demographic profiles, has the possibility of impacting on the right to trial. Uh, by one's peers. That's the Human Rights Commission. Uh, the National Council of uh, Women also said there were some, and I quote again, some reservations in regard to the proposed change for the age limit for being excused from jury service permanently. And the New Zealand Law Society uh, didn't take a position on the broad policy of the changes proposed in the bill. Uh, they simply uh, emphasised, and I agree, that the fundamental principle that must underlie all criminal justice legislation is that the right to a fair trial uh, is an absolute right. Mr Speaker, I think uh, you'd be, it would be a different situation if the decision to exclude uh, was not one that was sought by the individual wanting exclusion and wasn't specific to the individuals who request it. I think on that basis, uh, the permanent exclusion provision uh, is acceptable. I want to now come to part two of the bill, and that provides protection 
uh, of particulars of jury list information. Uh, that's in order uh, to maintain the privacy, safety and security of jurors, uh, and it's appropriate that we should protect the privacy of people who serve their community in that way. It, it would be thoroughly unacceptable to have those who serve on a jury subsequently to be followed up by the accused or by the media or by anybody else uh, and grilled about why they made the decision they made. That, that would, uh, would, would be in contradiction to the basic right of a person who does their duty for their community, serves on the jury to maintain the confidentiality of their position uh, and uh, their identity. The a policy uh, to a court proceedings, a party to a, a, a court proceedings, will only be able to inspect the particulars uh, of the jurors, such as their address, through a barrister and a, or a solicitor. Uh, that lawyer, in turn, cannot disclose to his or her client the contents of the protected particulars. Mr Speaker, there's a reason why this clause has been introduced, and that was a case back in 2010 when an individual who was representing himself as a defendant corresponded with people using his access to the names and addresses of those on the jury panel. As I said before, uh, that simply is unacceptable behaviour and we need to protect against it. Uh, the bill also, for that matter, uh, it requires that constables who are parties uh, to proceedings should not be able to view those protected particulars. While this is the right thing to do, uh, Mr Speaker, I don't think we can be naive about what the impact might be. It's not a foolproof way of stopping any party to the proceedings being able to track down the addresses of the jurors through other means. Uh, might be looking up the telephone book, might, might be looking at the electoral roll. So the protection that we provide is something I don't object to. It's worthwhile, uh, but it uh, doesn't provide uh, a, a full level of protection to the jurors in that way. It just makes it slightly less easy for somebody determined to find out who the, where the jurors uh, live and how to contact them uh, because they won't be given uh, that information directly. It would help if you're a juror by the name of Smith uh, rather than Titch, Mr Speaker, so it uh, might be rather easier to track you down than to somebody with a name that is rather more common. Mr Speaker, in conclusion, this is a bill neither with earth-shattering consequences nor one which is particularly controversial. Uh, the impact that the changes it makes uh, are, are relatively minor, uh, but I believe that they are worthy of uh, support and we will be supporting the second reading of this bill. I call Jackie Dean. Mr. Speaker, the